I've got a 2016 GMC Sierra 1 ton with a Duramax, and it has this P11DC. This is the rear knock sensor, so my outlet knock sensor reading either not being stable, meaning it's bouncing all over the place, uh, and giving non-credible readings, uh, or also sticking high on a diesel fuel cutout. Uh, and uh, we don't need anything more than a road test with some data to diagnose this. Um, ignore that U code that's in there. That's not relevant to what we're doing here. We are just going to diagnose this 11 DC. Now, if I've got a trouble code and have freeze frames available, I am always going to want to take a look at those. And so you can see on this one here, there's two freeze frames stored for this 11 DC. Uh, and the first one, if we click on it, you'll see that it's it's basically OBD2 info. It's a little snapshot of the OBD2 data. And while, you know, this is helpful, look, I can see the engine's running and I'm under load and that sort of thing. Uh, it's not entirely helpful. This second freeze frame uh, is where, you know, GM is really helpful. And if that, like, if they got an EVAP code, they said EVAP data, right? Misfire code, they said misfire data in the freeze frames. And so here we're gonna have uh, reducted data and of course my knock sensor data. And uh, again, not completely helpful, but I can see that I had 300 and something parts per million on the inlet and 130 so or so on the outlet. So I got like two thirds reduction and not the reduction I need. Um, so anyway, I had high outlet knocks and, uh, and now I'm gonna go look at some live data. So uh, time to go for a road test with this thing and do some live data. So lots of data choices here. I'm going to grab the uh, exhaust after treatment data uh, and then scroll down to find my inlet and outlet knocks uh, and then go for a ride. And we need to drive this thing like at least 15 minutes, uh, sometimes even a little longer in order to get the rear knock sensor up and operational and believable. Uh, if you have a knock sensor, even if it's online and looking like it's working, if that thing hasn't been running for like 15 minutes, don't bother uh, trying to condemn it or, or prove that it's good. Uh, these things have got to be in operation for a while uh, in, order to, uh, in order to have reliable readings. So uh, anyway, we start uh, driving this thing down the road and watching inlet and outlet knocks. So we're going to take a few seconds to watch this data, right? So... Inlet NOx is what's coming out of the motor. That's the one that's NOx sensor number one in the top left. And you see it's, you know, 180, 190 uh, or so parts per million. Outlet NOx is the one out the tailpipe is directly underneath it. And you don't have to watch long before you start seeing it become erratic. Right? I think it was just negative 22, 0, 20, right? And so this thing is bouncing around kind of wildly. Now, it should move, of course, right, as our reduction uh, amount changes. So like the changes that we're getting right now, not alarming at all, right? This will be normal. Uh, but you see, it doesn't take too long before it starts uh, acting crazy. The other thing is uh, on the right-hand side, you know, look, uh, average technician is not going to have this, but uh, it's uh, NOx measured out the tailpipe with a gas bench. And you can see it's, uh, you know, very close to zero parts per million. Uh, uh, but, and I have a steady 30 and 40 or so on the knock sensor. So I have this falsely high reading. And again, you see this thing bouncing all over the place. There it's up to, you know, 60 and uh, there we are at 70 now. And I don't have that high knocks. But uh, again, the more alarming part uh, is the thing bouncing around and even going down to negative numbers. So the bouncing around of the knock sensor is enough for me to condemn it just like it is. Uh, but we're going to look at the second test, which is going to be a hard D cell. So we're switching views here. This is recorded data and I'm playing it back. Uh, if you were, we're looking at four pieces of data here. So engine RPM, engine load, and then inlet and outlet NOx. Um, if as a technician, you're not gonna need engine RPM and load, I'm showing this because you're not on the road test with me, right? So if you look on the right hand side of the screen where the cursor is where the little vertical blue line is, you see on the very bottom is engine load and it disappears quickly, it goes to zero, right? So we're on a highway, we go off a downhill exit, snap the throttle closed, 
Uh, so engine load drops to zero. The next line above it, you can see engine RPMs tapering off. And then most importantly, on um, the top, uh, the first two lines is inlet NOx. So this is NOx coming out of the engine. And notice this goes very low, right? Ideally, with the injector shut off uh, and on a hard coast, I should have zero parts per million on both of these. Uh, and I don't. The, first, the top one is six parts per million, and that's nothing. Honestly, if it's under 10 parts per million, I call it good. I'm happy with that. Outlet NOx, however, is uh, stuck high at 34 parts per million. And this is too much. I can't have an outlet NOx sensor that's stuck that high. So I don't like this outlet NOx sensor for two reasons. Number one is it's higher than 10 parts per million on a D-cell cutout. Uh, the inlet looks great, but uh, the outlet stays high. Uh, and this is my bias. This is uh, what's causing my uh, trouble code to set. So two things. Again, if you looked at that other road test that we were on just a second ago, uh, the beginning of that, we had some erratic readings, including negative numbers, big negative, no ne negative numbers after it was already warmed up. Uh, and then this test here, which is outlet sensor stuck high at 34 parts per million on a hard D-cell. So anyway, uh, you know, nice, easy trouble code to diagnose. We have a code for outlet knock sensor uh, being out of bounds or uh, giving an unstable reading, which it did, uh, and also being stuck high on hard D-cell fuel cutout. So fix for this is replace the outlet knock sensor.